91.3. My name is Ife. I'm in the studio with Ugoma, Ayana, and Faith. History is in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we also have someone else in the studio with us. Our guest for today. Her name is Polly Alakija. Hello, Polly. Hello. Welcome Hello, to the dish. In case you're wondering who she is, she's an artist, a known painter, and um, she just told me that she was responsible for the art um, on Falomar Bridge, right? That's it's right. absolutely beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Before we get into what you're going to talk about here today, what inspired that art? Um, a combination of factors. I used to work at Marble House, okay. the building next door to Falmore, and there's one day I looked out of my office window and somebody had taken it um, upon themselves to paint the columns sort of green and mushy green. And to me, paint is a bit like, it's magic, it's a bit like alchemy, you can do anything with paint. So I saw this green and mushy green paint, I just thought, Oh no, how wrong can you go? If you're going to use paint, do it properly. Um, and then, of course, along came the Bring Back Our Girls movement, mm -hmm. and the photographs of the girls were hung up. And um, I have three daughters, and I just thought, if my daughters were missing, I would want them represented um, in, uh, in a more respectful, beautiful way. Um, and so I just kind of started thinking about the imagery. If I was now going to paint those columns, what would I paint on those columns? And of course there's so many things that happen around that space that I could have referred to, but I realised quite early on that anything I painted there that didn't make some kind of reference to the suffering of the girls and the families would not quite be right somehow. Mm. Having said that, it, the images of the women I've painted are not directly of those girls. They're rather more generic and they're more representational of women in general, women and girls in general. And I call them my voiceless women, my voiceless choir. Um, you know, so many women are voiceless yet remain strong and, and um, you know, there's a saying, she is a pillar of strength. Mm. So to me, those pillars are my pillars of strength. All right, thank you so much for that one. I just wanted you to give a little bit of information before I get deeper into who you are. So just a little bit of information about um, Polly Alakija. Um, Polly moved to Nigeria from the UK, I believe, in 1989. That's right. Um, so between 2005 and 2011, she was based in South Africa. She now works from the studio, which is her workspace and showroom in Lagos. Polly has exhibited in solo and group exhibitions in the UK, France, Nigeria, and South Africa. Africa, where her work can be found in numerous private and corporate collections. Polly is a trained teacher and has been continuously involved in educational programs. Um, she also has written and illustrated children's books for publishers in the UK, um, the EU, USA and Nigeria. That's a very big one. That's big, big shoes to fill. How, how have you been able to juggle all these things together? Um, well, for me it's all much one and the same. Um, when I'm, my, it's part of my work practice, especially if you're doing a large project or a project in the community. Mm. Those kind of projects don't happen without the involvement of very many people. So I try to work with young people as much as possible, empower them, um, impart some knowledge, and train up their skills as well. So education is very much part of what I do. Um, at the moment, my eyes a little bit off the educational space because I simply don't have time for all of that. Okay. Likewise, the illustrating work. I keep saying that you know, when I'm a granny, I'll go back to illustrating because <laughs> it's an unbelievably painstaking and slow mm. task. Yeah. Um, but you know, the whole magic of books, I love as well. So I think when I'm sort of very old and not able to climb scaffolding, I might go back to <laughs> book illustrating again. All right, fabulous. Now let's talk about art in the park. What mm. is that all about? This is an initiative driven by Last Park that I'm supporting and it's part, it's, we're trying to do two things here. Number one, we're trying to create a culture whereby people go out and enjoy our public spaces. Um, it's a bit of a lifestyle thing. Let's get people out and about enjoying our parks. We do have beautiful parks across Lagos. We need people to understand they're there, they're free. Go and use your public spaces. Then at the same time, I have a passion to um, help support young artists. Um, there's so many young artists, we've got so many young creators who find it difficult to get a step up on the ladder. How do they um, keep their work going? How do they showcase their work when they don't have access to the galleries? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult you know, to, to bridge that gap from being a student to becoming somebody that exhibits annually at a major gallery. How, how do you help somebody along that 
that path. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an initiative that I hope is spanning both, both of those goals. When does this start? Well, we actually started last weekend. We had oh, okay. 12 of our pioneer artists last weekend. They'll be back this weekend, and I hope a few more will join them. That, so amazing. I need the public to come out and support okay. them and encourage them and encourage them to keep going. Mm. So how, what's the criteria for you know, artists to have their work displayed? Um, there's not much censorship. We need to know that <clears throat> your art is of a certain standard, but we're not very judgmental. Um, I do ask artists just to show us a couple of pieces of their, of their work, um, but it's almost anything goes. We're kind of basing it very much along the lines of there's a public art gallery in London along Bayswater Road, which is now called, I think it's the longest public art gallery in the world, and it's just literally the same concept. Artists come and hang their artwork on the fence of the park um, at no cost, um, and so we're just trying to replicate that model here. Okay. Um, you know, you spoke about giving these artists a chance because some of them might not be able to have access to you know, different galleries. What do you think is, other than that, what do you think um, are the challenges that these up-and-coming artists in Nigeria face? Gosh, I think all artists face challenges all the way through their careers, but um, we do have a very creative youth. Um, our, our youth are increasingly looking at the creative industries. Um, yes, there's still pressure on young people to study you know, law or to become a doctor, but increasingly I'm meeting young people who, you know, digging their heels and saying, no, I want to be an architect, I want to be a designer, I want to paint, I want to get involved in art. But, you know, we don't have many structures in place to help them bridge that gap from being a student to actually getting out into the workplace and keeping the momentum going. So they need a lot of encouragement and a lot of support. All right. Um, and in, in a week that um, this has been uh, going on, uh, since you launched, um, how would you say it's doing so far in the parks? Well, it was, receiving it? yeah, last weekend was our first weekend. Okay. So we had um, we had quite a few visitors. To me, what was wonderful was when I was there with the young artists, it was seeing the passers-by mm -hmm. and the people who didn't know about it who were driving past and just saw it who stopped um, there was one group of walkers they were doing some marathon walk or mm -hmm. something and they came past and that was great so they all saw it so that's you know that's when it becomes a bit satisfying that oh yeah you know you're reaching people who had no idea mm -hmm. that it was there who had not intended to go out and see art yet they stumbled upon it and enjoyed it and then you, you start getting really interesting conversations with all sorts of people who hadn't really considered that you know on this Sunday morning mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and look at art but mm -hmm. hey there they were enjoying it yeah. and having a really nice conversation with the young artists who were displaying their work. Great and I think it's, it's such a great initiative because it also helps these young artists uh, start learning how to sell themselves, how to interface with different members of public mm -hmm. and really you know start meeting people, growing their brands, mm -hmm. and um, learning more about who they are as young artists as well. Right? Abs as well as absolutely, the, you know. and that's something that came out this last weekend. A couple of people came by and asked these young guys, you know, can you give me your card, can you give me your contact details? Yeah. Oh, Not wow. one of them had thought that, oh, maybe I put I my name up there, mm -hmm. or maybe I should oh, print a card. Okay. So, wow. Yeah, so it was good. Okay. started getting to think, and then also, you know, with almost all young artists that I work with, I have to just keep repeating to them that it's never going to be easy. You just have to mm -hmm. keep it's persevering. Yeah. If you don't sell anything this week, you come back next week, you come back the week after, mm -hmm. and eventually, if you're consistent yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. things will start falling into place. And I think that's the important message with Art in the Park, is that it's just not a one-off. Everybody's okay. asking you, how long is this going to okay. go on for? I hope we're starting a movement here. Okay. And, you know, if people start knowing that if we go to this park or that mm -hmm. park at a weekend, mm -hmm. we're not just hang out in the park, but there's also something cool to look at and cool to see. Okay. Um, and a couple of artists have asked, you know, can we come and set up our easels and start mm -hmm. painting? I'm saying, absolutely, come and make it happen. Mm, right um, here, right exactly, here. Exactly, exactly. I was also going to ask, um, how do you handle the cost? Because obviously you're bearing some form of cost. How does that work for you? Well, at the moment, yes. At the moment, to get it going, it's yeah. yet another project mm -hmm. where we're all just pitching in to make sure oh, okay. it happens. Mm -hmm. There are very nominal costs because 
is the last park space. Mm -hmm. okay. They're offering the space for free. Oh, um, great. So that's cool. Great. Mm -hmm. um, I ask a nominal sum of 500 Nara per artist oh, to okay. come and take part. Okay. Um, that's again just to t make sure mm -hmm. that we can keep going at the initial yeah. stage. Okay. Um, I seriously hope that we're going to get a bit of sponsorship along the line. Mm -hmm. and Most definitely. There is one telecommunications company that is supporting us. Okay. So, right. um, yeah, so I think we'll get some support to help the momentum going. But, you know, the cool thing about this concept is that there's not much, in, we don't need any infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The park is there, the space is there, mm. the wall is there, the artist's work is mm. there. So we're just joining the dots and putting it all together. All right. okay. I would also want to ask, you know, what are you doing to ensure safety? Because, you know, this type of this type of initiative would um, gain a lot of traction so you see a lot of people coming to the park mm. you know to view these mm. um, the works of the artists so what is mm. in place to ensure safety um, well I have not been aware that there's any safety issues at Maria Park there is security there's a security presence in the immediate okay. area um, and certainly last weekend it totally wasn't an issue at all mm. um, but as I said there, there's a police presence mm -hmm. very close by um, if we were now doing it under Fanamore Bridge I think I might be slightly more concerned about okay. security and safety <laughs> but yes. you know even there with what's happened there recently I, I think we we wouldn't need to worry that much. I think security is, uh, is uh, sourced out there because you've got a permanent uh, RS presence. car parked yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there is a permanent yeah. presence. And also kind of one thing I find very satisfying about the Fallonmore space is that prior to the renovation work mm -hmm. and the work that we've done there, everybody thought, you know, it's it's not a cool place to hang out. It's a bit dangerous, a bit dodgy. Mm -hmm. yeah. and there's all these guys hanging out mm -hmm. there. Um, with what we've done, it's kind of changed everybody's perceptions, mm. both them and us. And what I tell people is actually, you know, I go there quite often in the evening or if I'm driving home late at night, I'll, I'll get my car and just go and see what's going on. And I've never felt insecure. Yes, there's permanent security mm -hmm, presence, yeah. we know. But actually the same people who are hanging out there now, mm -hmm. the same guys who are hanging out there before, <laughs> it's just we kind of see each other in different light. Okay. So it's like now not scary, yeah. they realise that I'm normal and I realise yeah. they're kind of all quite human and normal too. So yeah. it's kind of had a weird transformation mm -hmm. of, of how we perceive each other. That's so how long did it take you to carry out that project? Um, we did it all in about three months, so three we were months. quite fast. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it, one, one it, minute it was not there. Yes, there. and then the, the next, next minute, minute. just kind of was like, <laughs> yeah. well, where did this come out from? <laughs> you know? I do say to people, please don't take that um, as a benchmark of how I normally work. I mean, I do, I can work quite fast, but that was a bit extreme. Um, it became part of the Lagos at 50 celebration, so we had a deadline of delivery by the 27th of May. That was so when I met you. <laughs> That's right, that's right. And so um, my team worked so hard mm -hmm. to pull it off, really. Yeah. They worked and very, they do very a great hard. job. Bless. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's really changed the landscape. Yeah, and, yeah. Is, and I think, um, for me, that's really what, what art is, especially public art. Mm -hmm. You know, it changes the landscape. It really beautifies every space. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this art in the park uh, situation, um, I was saying last weekend, on uh, Friday, um, I went to a, an art event where they were launching a book about mm. how to buy art, how to, mm. you know, uh, know what to buy. And I think, you know, it, it, it's really another example of how things are changing in mm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. how to appreciate art. So now imagine if everybody and their mother, or at least somebody, mm. you know, has a copy of this book, right? And you share it, like I do. I'll mm. be sharing some things from there that I'm okay. learning. Right. And then people have ideas of how to buy better art. And mm. then you've got uh, young mm. artists showing up in the parks and you never know where one of them might be in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. That mm. piece of art that you buy might cost you, you know, I don't know, 5,000 naira. Naira now. Uh, now. Mm. And, you know, before you know it, it's appreciated, mm. right? So Absolutely. What do you think I, about that? I agree. And um, I hope there's a chapter in that book on buying art in the park. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if there isn't, they need to add it. Um, yeah. And I would say, you know, yes, we started last weekend with 12 artists. And um, there are a couple of pieces, and I'm not going to mention them because it wouldn't be fair, Aww. that were exceptional. And I'm oh, just wow. waiting for somebody to go by and stop and realize how exceptional those couple of pieces we are. We're talking about it! Fate likes buying art. 
so yeah, so there's some real gems there, and just what you said. Uh, okay. There's a couple of guys there who I can see. Yep, in a few years' time, they're going to be big names. So we'll probably right. stop yeah. by this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I think you need to. We will stop by this <laughs> yeah. weekend. That's it's not too far from home. Yes. Yeah, so it's on great. Saturday and Saturdays and Sundays. Sundays. That's right. And okay. I think it's also a great place to take kids. You know, mm -hmm. yes. one of the things that I struggle with as a mom is, ah, what do we do this weekend? You know, mm -hmm. ah, why mm -hmm. do I take? And you know, in other places in the world, you could just go for a stroll in the Central Park. You know, Baltimore. <laughs> you can go for a stroll and you'll see art and you yep. you feel safe and it's just something else to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. as opposed mm -hmm. to just sitting there buying ice cream. Sweet. So I think this, for if, if for that reason alone, just to have parents being able to have another space mm. that is safe to mm. take their kids and have conversations around art. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like yeah. that. Faith, you're talking about you know bringing kids there. I'm, I'm, I haven't been to Miracola Park in a long time. The last time you went there, do you, was it equipped for like kids to play? Were there like swings and things like that there? Yeah. It was around an event, so they were, yeah. they were just. Uh, those things just were set case. up, they, they were like pop-ups. Okay, so they, they did pop set up like, you know, those pop-up uh, jungle gyms okay, and those, okay. those uh, inflatable, uh, uh, you know, yes, things. Yes, the, the bouncy castles. The bou uh -huh, but but I, think, I think with this initiative, it's definitely going to, you know, push them to, um, to develop that place. Because now, talking about bringing kids there, aside from art, it could be a huge event mm -hmm. okay during the weekends mm -hmm. you, your kids are going there they're playing around you know mm -hmm. you're there admiring art i mean it's going to attract a lot of people so i think this initiative is one step towards the right direction because mm -hmm. from this they would have to develop that park the more yeah. To, yeah. To, to be more acceptable for kids yeah. Yeah. and everyone to come all right polly thank you so much for coming you're in welcome. sharing this thank with you. us so this takes place sunday saturdays and sundays That's right. Uh, from what time? Can we come by 6 a.m., 5 a.m.? What no, time? Don't come <laughs> early. Um, last weekend, we managed to get everything set up by 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. to 6.30 mm -hmm. in the evening. So okay. 10 to 6.30. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely we'll fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. All Thank right, you. there that, there you have it. This is all about art in the park, uh, Murakona Park, Saturdays and Sundays, um, 10 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. So you can go with your family, go with your friends, go and admire art, you know, meet with people. It's a good place to also network as well, you know, art lovers coming together to just take a look at Nigerian art and just admire it. Thank you so much once again. 37 minutes past the hour of one. It's still the dish here on Lagos Talks 91.3. Let's take a break. And when we come back, the scoop is still on. There are a couple of stories that we have to share with you. <laughs> <laughs> 